So thank you so much for tuning into the review. It means so much to me that you guys like and favorite the videos. I think the only way that we're gonna go forward with three kilobytes is with the help of the community. You guys are, have been just amazing. We're almost at 47,000 subs. And the only way we're gonna grow is by the, con the continued support that you guys have given us by sharing the videos and liking the videos and commenting. So please, please do that on this video. And I thank you so much for tuning in. Hey guys, so I'm reviewing Legend of Zelda Wind Waker in HD. Oh my god, that was a mouthful. Let me first off say, mwah. Mwah! Game looks so beautiful in HD. Unbelievably gorgeous in 1080p on the Wii U. I just got a new television for the show and oh my god, I just want to go mwah, 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 mwah. Hey, it's a beautiful <laughs> I'm Italian, I can't even do an Italian accent. Oh. So this is a 10 year anniversary for Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and what better way to bring it back than a, a wait a minute, triple A title. Nintendo's calling this a triple A title, and they're, they're actually making us pay $49 for a game that's 10 years old. Yes, it's spectacular, and it's glorious 3D, and HD, and all that crap, but is it worth $49? Let's find out. So the game opens up on Outset Island. This is basically your little hometown in the middle of the ocean and your grandmother and your little sister are there and you're like, hey, what's up, yo, it's my birthday, give me gifts, bitch. And she's like, I got you the sick telescope, check out the island. You look around, everything's looking awesome. You're like, cool, whatever. And all of a sudden this giant bird comes down, swoops your sister out of there and you are like, what the hell, yo. So then some pirates show up and they take you on a boat to this mysterious island and you start to see some of the gameplay elements in this. There's a lot of sneaking around, putting barrels on top of your heads, avoiding searchlights, and also avoiding enemies that can just spot you at random. So it's, it's really this like intense Splinter Cell game for the first like half an hour. And then you get really close to saving your little sister and the bird comes and gets you and then takes you into the middle of the ocean. You think, oh God. So a sailboat shows up, saves you. He's known as the King of Lions. He's a talking sailboat. And I'm not going to give too much away about him, but he's obviously a huge part of the story because you're constantly riding him around the open ocean. And you, you kind of come across this island with him and you buy a sail and then that's truly when the game starts to open up. And the gameplay in this is truly about going to all of these different islands and different outposts and different dungeons and little islands and just finding all these little treasures and really progressing in the story and collecting that Triforce and winning the game. That's that's what the story's about. And it's really, it, it's it's grand to say that, the least about that. It's epic. Gameplay, let's talk about that. There's a new sail in the game called the Swift Sail, which allows you to basically control the wind a lot easier than pulling out the Wind Waker every second you want to turn the direction of the wind. So in the original game, you've got the Wind Waker, which allows you to control the wind. So if you want to go north, south, east, west, any direction, you do a little spell and the wind would go and change in that direction. Your sail would actually pick up that wind. So if you wanted to head over here, you would have to do the, the special little doo 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 with the wind waker and he'd go in that direction. Now with the swift sail, the wind is automatic. So it happens in any direction that you point your ship in. So if you're pointed north, boom, the wind's behind you and you get there a lot quicker. So that's one really cool aspect of the game that I thought was very tedious in the original game. Really good feature, glad, glad they added that. Can't talk today. Another cool thing in the game would be the ability to aim with the gamepad by just picking it up and pointing in a direction. I always thought with the 3DS remake of Ocarina of Time that was an amazing feature for targeting items or even just looking around the world. Another cool feature would be the ability to take selfies with the Picto box and post them to the Miiverse. Another cool feature would be the ability to find these special bottles that wash up on shore which are essentially just notes from random strangers in the Miiverse. So it's cool to just like open it and hear these like little stories that people write or whatever it is. Another cool thing would be the streamlined inventory. We've always wanted to see a Zelda game where the inventory was out in front of you on the gamepad and we could finally get that in this game. 
where you can actually assign, say, whatever it is, your bow and arrow to one of the buttons in real time by just dragging and dropping it onto the button on the gamepad. That works perfectly. You can also use the Pro Controller if you must, but I highly suggest to use the actual gamepad. Uh, the reason you want to do this is because you can obviously play off television, which I have it set up right now to do. And you can also use the inventory system like I just said, and it's an amazing feature, so definitely play with the gamepad. Another cool feature is hero mode, which basically means that you won't find any hearts in the open world. The only way you can really heal, heal yourself is by potions, which, which means you have to go out there and fight and get rubies, heart pieces or heart containers, and then last but not least, the fairy fountain. So, that makes the game very difficult, not to mention that the enemies are double, do double the damage, which is ridiculous in this mode. So if you want to play a true hardcore game, play it on that mode, it's, it's really hard. Another cool aspect that they fixed with this would be the cranes. Back in the day, there was a crane animation that happened any time that you would search for treasure at the bottom of the ocean. And now they've shortened the crane and they've also cut the cutscenes down a little bit, so when you actually send your crane out to dig for treasure at the bottom of the ocean, it's very quick. It used to be very tedious and I hated doing it because there was this like animation of the crane coming out and going down, so yes, they have fixed that. Another amazing aspect would be the 1080p graphics with the new lighting system. This game, I can't tell you enough how beautiful it looks. The graphics are just stunning, just beautiful. The sense of adventure, really comes through obviously the dialogue because there's no voice acting in this. You really have to read it, but I always felt that in a Zelda game the atmosphere was a huge part. And in this, it does not let you down, especially with this 1080p graphics. Unbelievably gorgeous, just stunning visuals, just amazing. As for my final score for the game, there's a lot I want to mention in this. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. I highly suggest if you already have a Wii U to pick it up, but if you don't have a Wii U, I would go out there and get that Zelda bundle. It's spectacular and it comes with the game pre-installed on the system. So that's really enjoyable. Another thing I need to mention is this game is 10 years old and it's still $49. That's mind blowing to me. What is Nintendo thinking? Like I'm gonna go out there and keep buying these remakes for fucking full price for a AAA title? I don't know, it's like, are they just doing because they know that we'll buy because it it's Legend of Zelda or are they just doing it because they want to hold this like maintain this like high standard for their games. I don't know. The fact that you can control the wind is just an amazing gameplay element in this and you really have to do it a lot of the time because there's special abilities in the game such as the ability to hold a leaf over your head. It's one of the, the many 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 items that you pick up but you can control the wind and then he has to float down into certain sections of maps and I thought that was amazing. Another cool thing is Obviously the sail ship and the ability to search for treasures, search for anything that's at the bottom of the ocean that you're going to find there. They've also increased the ruby size from I think 300 from the original to 500 here so it feels a, less, a little less uh, restricted in terms of how much you can hold so you can get a lot more items in this one. The music, just incredible. Uh, another major thing that I need to bring up about this game is this game is just truly emotion. There's something about this game that really brings me back to when I played Link to the Past. And I think it has just to do with being a child playing that game and the, the sense of adventure in this is just so grand that you just can't help but just explore every little nook and cranny of it. So the emotion in it is high, the sense of adventure is high, the atmosphere is high. The, the, the attacking abilities are just as good as Ocarina of Time. There's not much to be said in terms of negative things in this game. I really had a great time like playing the hell out of this. Uh, it's just that thing with the camera bothers me at times. You just start fiddling with it too much. And I felt that this sense of adventure should just be natural. And when you have to move the camera around so much, you realize that you're being taken out of the experience at times. Especially when you're drawn into such a detailed crisp environment or, or atmosphere and then have to kind of be like well the camera's like stuck in a freaking corner here like this is pissing me off so i kind of want to know what you guys think of this full price triple a title that's 10 years old do you think it's a little too much i highly suggest to pick this up i know that i didn't go into too much detail in the story because i think it's just one of those adventure games you really need to play for yourself it just you need to experience this open sea adventure. It's really, really addictive, really, really fun.